Ain't no high stepping with Marcus J. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. If you can't tell, I'm feeling real like 80s slash early 90s. Got a little Annie played, a little guy, a little BBD. Got a couple other songs. If we got time, I'll get to. So definitely glad that you guys are staying with us. I got a couple of hits of people enjoying the music tonight. And that's the kind of stuff we play on. Did they just play that? music only show that we run on thursdays from seven to nine we usually start a little bit before seven and a little bit after nine and then of course uh we've been playing mostly on saturdays mostly all day this past saturday we went literally from 10 to 10 uh all music right here in the same place you're listening to us right now not the mix l auto if you want mix l law you're gonna have to go somewhere else you're gonna hit us up on uh the win at the shout cast uh, go directly to the LegacyInternetRadio.com. You can hit us on Loud City. There's other ways you can get us uh, where you're listening to us on MixLR right now. The only show that you will hear on this MixLR is Ain't No Half Step and Marcus J. It's exclusive to MixLR. So that we are very proud of. But definitely find other ways to enjoy programming here. LegacyInternetRadio.com right now. We got programming on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, and we are going to soon expand uh, hopefully the six days and eventually the seven days a week of programming. So we're definitely excited uh, about expansion in the future uh, of our website. Of course, LegacyInternetRadio.com is wholly owned and run by the crew of Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J, the flagship show. And we are certainly, uh, once again, proud of that. Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J will be now turning it over to Calm Banks, who will ask the question, what do you think about it? Calm Banks. You know what? Yesterday was that day called Father's Day. And I want to say one thing. I had a good time. I got a great gift. Uh, I want to say that's one of the better gifts that the business has ever given me from the simple standpoint of I'm a Cowboys fan. You can never go wrong with getting me something that says Dallas Cowboys. Let me reiterate, Dallas Cowboys. So I got me a hat. I was happy to see that. I got me a couple of cards. One of them was kind of funny. So I just want to know what other characteristics of a good dad. Now, I particularly like to say it like this. Marcus has seen me with my son, and where he sees me, he sees my son. I spend that much time with my son. Now, he can't go with me every place because, you know, we may partake, partake in some spirits, but even if there are spirits there, I don't partake. I try to show my son a point of view that I like to do, however, he will never see me do. Um, try to give him benefits of the doubts when I am fussing at him. I reach back to him when I fuss at him and say, hey, dude, that's not cool. Think about what you're doing after you did it, before you do it, before you break something. You know, he got mad at a game that he just bought, had a fit, tried to break his DS. I told him it was stupid. Yes, I did. I said, that's the stupidest thing you could have done. I made him hold his arms out till his arms started hurting. Tell me it's hurt. I said, that's how that game feels. But that game can't tell you that. Now, do you want to do your game like that? Do you want somebody to hold your arms and try to rip you apart? I didn't care he was hurt. Build some character in him. So, again, I want to know, what are those qualities that you find or you feel are good in a dad? Well, I mean, I mean, I've been around you a long time. I've been around you since before either of us had any children. And I know that I've given you a hard time when we go places and we all kicking and having a beer or whatever and I'll say to you, have a beer, man. And you you remain steadfast, you won't do it. And I and, and I pick on you, but in the interest of full disclosure, I you know, I look up to you for that because that takes will. You know, and the fact that, you know, you kicking it with the homies, first of all, you got your little homie with you. And he's right, listeners. Where you see Calm Banks, you see Lil Banks. And he's usually here in studio with us. He just happens to not be here with us tonight. And so I think you are a really good father. And, I, and if I haven't told you that before, I'm going to tell you that now. And I'll tell you that in, in, a, in a public way. So happy Father's Day one day late you know, to, to, to you. As far as good qualities, man, I think that you just need to be yourself. That's the first thing. That's the most important thing. Because... You know, if you show your child the essence of who you are as a person and you're a good person, they can't do anything but get good qualities from you. You know what I'm saying? And I do think that most of us, not all of us, because some of us, you know, 
some of us are lemon, <laughs> you know, bad one off of the assembly line. But for the most part, I think we are born inherently good, inherently good people with good qualities who know right from wrong, who know, you know, the things that you should do and the things that you shouldn't do. And so when I think about my daughter and I think about the fact that I want to teach her, you know, positivity, I want to teach her manners, I want to teach her respect, I want to teach her that the way you te talk to people, you know, is going to go a long way towards how those people view you. And so that's a big deal with me. So that's the reason why I make her say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You know, I make her be respectful, not just to adults, but also to her peers, because those people, they they deserve to have respect just like anybody else. You know, so I think that if you lead by example, you know, hopefully, hopefully you're not an asshole. If you're an asshole, then please don't lead by an example. But <laughs> but 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 I, but I think that it's important. That we show our children the positive things that we do uh, and certain things that we may do that may not be so positive. I think if we keep those to a minimum, they're going to learn them things in due time. You know, try not to lay your heavy stuff on the kid. But, you know, I think that's what you need to do. K Kata, pick up there, man. What's your what's your idea of positive qualities in a good father? Um, Positive qualities of a good father. Um. Well, obviously, you want to be able to be an example to the younger uh, generation or what have you, whether it be your kids, whether it be uh, your nephews, nieces, so on and so forth. Um, I think that, you know, it's all about showing examples of what to do, what not to do, um, being an example to that young mind that's very, you know, uh, very at that age where they suck up everything you say, but more so more things than more things than what you're saying, but actually how you're conducting yourself. Uh, being an example, being that source of knowledge for that younger person or what have you. There's a lot of different things that uh, being a father encompasses and it has nothing to do with money. You know, it's more to do with time and knowledge and, and experience. And that those are the things that you want to try and uh, instill in whether, again, it be your child, your niece, your nephew, your godchild, uh, you know, that, those are the things that I would say are the components of being a good father. Um, you know, my situation is a little different, so, you know, those are just some things that, that I see. Well, what about you? How do you feel about the situation? Uh, I, I agree with K-Dub. My situation is a little different also. Um, my father... You know, we had a we had a really good relationship coming up, and he showed me what he could. And you know, I was thankful for that. Um, I just really think it's what your situation is, how you look at it. Um, it may not always be monetary; it doesn't have to be. It's just the time, the quality time, the things that you do. Um, I think that I don't know. It, I just you, really have you, a different outlook. Well, let me let me <laughs> ask you this. I'll, I'll somewhat interview you. Make it a little simpler, make it a little simpler. You have children. Yes. Okay. As far as your children, think about the positive things that you see in the father of your children. Uh, think about that and how you'd like to see uh, maybe more of that in your community with regards to how other children are parented. Is there anything in particular? Uh, that the father of your children may do or or you know that you that you that you may think of I'll tell you like this the best thing dad told me was playing baseball that's that's one of the biggest memories I have of my dad I mean my dad's still around don't get me wrong he's still kicking and, and, and chilling um, but you got to understand this is a man that raises the bar on any type of interaction I have with people and what I have for my son as well. Um, I posted this as my status the other day. Uh, one person said, in my opinion, my dad raised the bar for all other men to achieve and surpass. Great question. And that came from a young lady. Um, another person said, loving, caring, giving, and sharing. That was my dad. Always had time to listen and was willing to give his advice. He, he and mom raised five kids. Things were tight most of the time, but we never did without love, food, or in our tummy. We didn't have a lot of materialistic things, but we were happy, close-knit family. Somebody else said honesty. Someone else said someone who loves you no matter what you do or say, what mistakes you make, celebrates the good times, and loves you throughout the bad. Um, 
somebody else told me it was a really good question. I think each person um, has to, to their own definition. One thing I know to be true is a dad is a man, but a dad is truly different from a man. Um, and one of the things I like to say is, you know, you have deadbeat parents, and anybody can be a father, but it takes a man to be a dad. Uh, that's totally different. They're, they carry, they're synonymous, but a dad is somebody that when they call you daddy, then, you know, that carries weight, then this is my father. You know, I can say, I can say to somebody, out of respect, this is my father, but I'd rather say this is my dad, which gives you a closeness to that person than he can father. Father is so um, mainstream, so rigid. Dad and daddy, you know, those are two different things when, when you're hearing a child say, even as a grown child myself, I say dad. You know, every now and then I might have to call him by his first name so he can hear me. But I still say, dad, well, how are you doing? Dad, what's going on? Dad, check on him. Um, I'm kind of ashamed I didn't get dad a Father's Day card, but I did call him. You know, and would you believe it or not, the, um, there was a report one time that showed the highest number of collect calls were made on Father's Day. Can you believe that crap? Well, I, w I would guess, unfortunately, a lot of them are probably coming from the jails, mm -hmm. uh, which is another, is another you know, angle to this conversation. I I I'll say this. I mean, while I understand the spirit of what you just said, I don't really like to get into the semantics of what you call them because to me that don't matter. You know what I mean? Like, Dad, personally, for me, it just never felt natural or organic to me. Dad, daddy. I never called my father that. Like, is for as long as I can remember, I've been calling him pop. It, but see, that's again, that's but what's the, the kinship. But, but what's the difference? The kinship you know, is there. You know, I mean, you know, 100 years ago, they used to call him pa. You know what I mean? In other countries, they say father. I mean, I don't get the difference between dad or daddy or father. It, to, to me, and it, you know. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on this one. I don't think it you know, merits a whole lot of discussion. I just wanted to point out that I don't think that what you call them, because I've heard people say that before. You know what I mean? Only a man, you know, you know any, any dog can father a child, and only a man can be a daddy. Like, whatever. To me, that's just that's nonsense semantics to me, personally. Well, I, I, I can put dad and pop together. Yeah, but I, I mean, even though I call my father pop, that's, and, I'm not and, and you say that dad and pop are the same thing, I'm saying, what's the difference between father, you know, okay, you fathered a child, I mean, but, you know, you, you don't get to be called dad. Like, I understand what you're saying. I have difficulty re-articulating what you said, but to me, it doesn't matter. If you're there for your kid, great. If you're not there for your kid, not great. But what the word is to me is just, you know, that's just crazy. Doug, what's your thoughts on this? Um, You know what? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, be, and just throw it out there, full disclosure, you know, um, I do agree with you in regards to, you know, playing semantics. You know, um, I grew up in a household where I'm going to just, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. I don't know my father. Never had, it's not a bad situation where, you know, he did the skip to my loo out the door or anything of that nature or anything of that, you know, thinking negatively about it. You know, it, I just don't know my father. So I was fortunate enough to have individuals such as my uncle, such as my great grandfather, to be honest with you, I called my great grandfather daddy, you know, up until, you know, him leaving leaving me in uh two thousand two. But I'm sorry, two thousand one. So I'm two thousand one. I apologize, nineteen ninety one. Um, you know, I think it is a thing of semantics, but um, you know, daddy, father, whatever, you know, I have a great stepfather right now that uh makes my mother happy and I granted I don't call him daddy. I don't call him dad or pops or anything like that, but I do recognize him as being my stepfather. He stepped in certain situations and just giving me that particular guidance. You have a number of you have a number of people in the hood that we know that necessarily are not raised by their biological father, but they may be raised by a uncle, someone that they look up to. Um, I have a cousin of mine that to be honest, he's been around his uh his girlfriend's son since he was two and if but if you ask him you know who's your father he'll he'll point he'll point to him so it just i i, I say all of that to just basically say that nowadays it's more of what that particular dynamic is you know who it is that you consider to be that father figure you know um just to kind of throw something i know i'm kind of long-winded with it just to kind of throw something out there you know yesterday i received a text from uh, a friend of mine that I happen to be her daughter's godfather 
and she stated to me, you know, Happy Father's Day. And I, I told her, I was like, well, you know, I don't have, you know, I don't have any children or whatever. And she said something that was, you know, it was, it was true and it was interesting. She said that, you know, I have God children as well as individuals that we have grew up with. They have children that look at me as being a father figure, whether I'm considered the uncle or godfather or so on and so forth. So again, it just it's just dependent upon what that particular family dynamic is and what your role to that child is. So let me let me let me get this straight. You are a late thirties black male who doesn't have any children, who hasn't ever been in any trouble, who has a job goes to work every day and does the damn thing basically is what you're telling me uh, uh yeah i'm i'm so, the, uh, so, so y'all I, exist i guess i'm the one off i'm the one off so y'all so y'all things. y'all exist now i say that i say yeah, that yeah, i say yeah. that i say that facetiously because i know that you know we hear a lot of conversations about how you know brothers you know don't do what we're supposed to do or you know we you know in you know in jail and gay and doing bad and all of that kind of stuff and a lot of that comes from you know the broken families you know and it you know there's history to why you know the families are broken and how that manifests itself in our youth which you know we can get into another time but what I, the, the, the point I'm making is you had people who were there who came and stepped in and did what it took to make sure that little dub had you know models of how being a man should be and fellas, if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, you know, you see that little shorty in the neighborhood who, you know, he might be slipping. He may not have a dude around him. He may not have his pops. He might not have his grandpops. He might not have his mother's boyfriend right now. He might not have his uncles, grandfathers, nobody. You know, pull the shorty aside. Be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you might want to go about it this way. Pull your pants up. You know what I'm saying? You can't call ladies out their name, you know, whatever it may end up being, because you might change that little shorty's path and changing that little shorty's path might end up being a situation where you change a lot of paths. Like take Dub, for example, you know, he mentioned that his homegirl gave him big ups for being, you know, a father figure. And, you know, his natural response is I don't have no seeds, but she's like, you do. You may not have direct seeds, but you still watering them seeds because, you know, those kids around you, they seeing you as a role model. They seeing you as a father figure. You got God children, you know, and I and I know your God children and, and, and also an interest of full disclosure. And Dub and I had this conversation earlier today. I was telling him how Mama J looks up to him and she don't even get to see him. You know what I'm saying? So that's important. That's real, real, real important. Uh, Dub, and I'm glad that you brought that up. You, you, you know, you gave us a piece of your personal life, and I and I appreciate that. We're getting a hit on the MixLR page, uh, Stephen Sykes and Live and Radio to show a child how to be better than you, to grow, to be a leader in their own right, not a follower. Uh, show my child that through education, having diversity in their life, sports, people you associate with, skills, languages to be exact, uh, to show an example, uh, and love themselves. And before getting with anyone. Uh, it's not about needing another half to be whole, but about being a whole person before seeking someone else. I think, Stephen, I think that's a very, very, very good point, uh, and I'm glad that you put it uh, that way. Another twist um, that I want to take, and Aisha, I will get you in on this one. Uh, another twist that I want to take on the whole, you know, what it takes to be a father and Father's Day being this weekend is uh, sisters, not just sisters, but you know, women in general who uh, are given the Happy Father's Day tribute. Uh, I have my feelings on it. I'm going to have the three of you uh, give your feelings on it. Uh, you being the lady in the room, uh, I'm interested in knowing what your feelings are on it. And anybody who's listening that wants to be down, we're nearing the end of the show, but we will still take calls at 804 uh, Sisters who we know do, in some cases, more than their share uh, being given the Happy Father's Day tribute. How do you feel about that? I will preface what I'm saying by letting everyone know I am a single mother. And I did get a few of those text messages yesterday and I had to chuckle at them. Um, I'm not down with that. I am their mom, but I can never be their dad. Um, Can't be their father. I can't fill that gap for them. I appreciate, you know, that everyone sees the hard work that I'm putting in with my kids. But, you know, I was honored a month ago as being their mother. So 
I don't deserve any props for being their dad. Callbacks. You know what? I'm glad you said that because I had another friend who is a single mom and she did the same thing. She was like, she was upset um, at that. And then I saw a friend who actually put people who wish single moms a happy Father's Day on blast. He was like, what the hell? I mean, really, you got your day, so to speak. You, I can't replace Mrs. I can never do that. That would be somebody else who would be a, my, my mother or, you know, that godmother per se. But there are things a woman cannot do ultimately that a man can do. Now, if you're my daughter, I can teach you how you should be dated. Right. I can teach you how to throw a fastball. I can teach you how to throw a curveball. I can teach you how to cook and clean. But a woman can teach you how to nurture, how to care. Granted, we can do it a certain way, but it's not the same way a mother or a woman can do it, okay? Women can do the same thing. You can cut grass, okay? You can throw the fastball, but there are certain things that a bond between father and son that mother and son would never have. There's a bond that mother and son would have that dad would never have. There's a bond that father and daughter would have that mom and daughter would never have. If you had an enemy in your house, it's your daughter. Your best friend, it would be your son. If he had an enemy in his house, it would be his son, right. not his daughter. It would be the opposite way. It's the Mrs. J versus little J. You know, granted, I somehow <laughs> throw off that curve because little, little Cap, he, that's my best friend. We are best friends. He and his mom fight right now. That may change in five years. But right now, he still loves his mom. Don't get me wrong. He adores his mom. I just know... There's a big difference between how he and I interact and how they t those two interact. So, I personally won't wish a single mom happy Father's Day because you are not the daddy. As as as, <laughs> as my man Morris said, you are not the father. You are not the father. Uh, Kada, what's your thoughts on that? Um, personally, I think that is real ignorant. Um, it's something to play around with, you know, kind of in, in, in a jokingly manner, but the more and more you think about it, it's kind of ignorant because, you know, granted, uh, the, the mother may fill in for those situations where the mother does fill in for the father, she still can't be a father. She is not a man. She can't teach that man, how, she can't teach that boy how to be a man. Regardless of whatever you may do, whatever, regardless of whatever you may think you may be able to do, you cannot teach a boy how to be a man. That's my opinion, and I think that that's the opinion of a lot of individuals that I do know. Um, it, again, it was something that, um, you know, you may hear about it, it's, it's done jokingly or whatever, but when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, you know, I think that it's a very ignorant type of thing to send a text to a mother and say happy Father's Day because I, I say it like this, it ain't all deadbeat dads out here. It's some ancient women. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. Tip it's, job. It's Tip not, job. It's, Tip job. <laughs> it's some not. It's some. It's some women out here that have children, and they're not holding their responsibility. They're not holding up to their end of the bargain. And you have guys out here that's filling in. And I know that those guys don't get the Happy Mother's Day text or message or cards of that nature. It's called Happy Father's Day. Yeah. So let's celebrate the individuals that are fathers out here, not necessarily take the time and degrade or blast your, your baby father because he didn't give you $20 or he didn't give you 5 or whatever like that. It's called Happy Father's Day. Yeah. And just real quick, I just want to go back shout out to my godson Anthony McLeod going to uh, Georgia Southern and uh, my godson Anise Brookings going to uh, Syracuse University this year. Just had to throw that out there. That's what it is. Happy Father's Day to you, Kato. Listen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Happy Godfather's Day. You the Godfather. Um, said, said is hitting us up on uh, the Mix LR page and he says very simply with the essence of what my whole feeling is on this and, 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 and Aisha and Carlton uh, and K-Dub and said of course we all agree and, 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 and we don't have any detractors here so it's not really anything to debate uh, said says I respect the intent but it devalues the day for good fathers and it, that, I mean that in essence he said in one sentence what we all said in two minute speeches. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you ain't no daddy. Mm -mm. You ain't no pappy. You ain't pop. You ain't father. You not pa. How you, come? You not. How come we don't have this conversation around Mother's Day? You never hear this. Well, conversation I mean, you know, Mother's we also had the we also had the conversation about how you know you can't get a restaurant reservation at Mother's Day, but. 
You know, you can go to Ruth's Chris and walk in on Father's Day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, and it's not just the communities that we may be exposed to that have deficient fathers in them. You know, that's a joke that is, you know, known to people who are in communities that don't have that kind of issue. You know what I'm saying? Like fathers are always just a little bit disrespected. Now, I'm not going to sit here and minimize the work that a mother does because we know, you know, you cultivate life, you carry life. You know, the fact that, you know, you hold life within your womb from the moment of conception until the baby is born. No one is ever going to minimize that. As a man, I can't understand that. I can't relate to that. I would never sit and try to pontificate around that. I just wouldn't do it. However, I'm a father and I deserve respect and I'm going to take respect and I'm not going to allow someone to disrespect me because they got issues with their baby daddy. You ain't no daddy. You're a woman. And we said happy Mother's Day to you last month. And so, like said says, you are devaluing me. You are devaluing Carlton Banks. And you are devaluing Pops J and Big Brother J and any other man who's raising their children by having us even have the discussion about your baby daddy who ain't doing nothing. I don't want to talk about him today because this day ain't about him. It's Happy Father's Day. And to use Carlton Banks' phrase earlier, he ain't a father anyway. So why are we talking about him? You ain't no father because you're a woman. So why are we talking about you? We need to be talking about the men that's doing what they need to do. We talking about single fathers. We talking about married fathers. We talking about any man who's taking care of his children, who's doing what it is he needs to do to make sure that child has everything they need to grow up to be productive people in this world. And that's the way I feel about it. And I'm re- I feel real strongly about it because I had some people come at me because I, I made those feelings known publicly. And I had some people come at me and hit me with the whole, well, if he ain't around, I'm the mother and the father. But you ain't the father. I'm sorry. You just you are not the father. And you can say whatever you want to say about all the stuff you do. And I respect that. You do a lot. But you're not the father. It's, that's, that's just what it is. Ain't no how stepping with Marcus yeah we're gonna leave it there we're gonna take our final break of the night and when we come back we got our rants we got our closings and we're gonna end the show we glad you're here stay with us we still got some more show here you're gonna hear our final words on the night Marcus Jay and you know how to step and stay with us people be back in a minute